Good evening and welcome to the Defiant City Council for meeting for tonight, June 1st, 2021. As always, before council meeting is called to order, we have a, a local pastor come and open us up in prayer. Tonight we have Pastor Tim Hacker from Bethel. Thanks for visiting us this evening. Thank you for allowing me to pray. Uh, this will be the first time I've ever prayed at City Council when I own two houses in town. <laughs> but shortly I'll only, only own one again. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> I feel twice as invested in that. You know, I was reading something recently and it dawned on me that um, maybe a lot of people don't know this, but the word ecclesia in the Bible talks about a, a group of people who get together to take care of the needs of the community and they work with the people of the community and they gather in an assembly in order to make those decisions, you know, that's what's important for the community. That word ecclesia is also translated for most of us church. So I don't know whether you guys realize it or not, but you're the ecclesia here in Defiance, and uh, you're doing the Lord's work here. So I think it's good that we just pray that God helps you all that he can, <laughs> and I'm sure you'll take it. So let's pray. Father, thank you for these wonderful people, for their efforts to make defiance what it is and it is a great place to live lord and we are thankful for that we pray that you'll give them wisdom when they come to something that they can't agree on that there will be an answer come out of nowhere sometimes and just surprise everyone and that you will just show yourself mighty through them for the people of this community so that uh, all of us lord can just serve and love and be all the things that we should be so we thank you for it in jesus name Amen. 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 All right, I'll turn it back over to Pastor McMaster and Pastor McCann's. I've got to go paint. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Let the record show that all the members of council are present this evening. Would you stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I've reviewed the index minutes for our last city council meeting of May 25th, 2021. Uh, do we have a motion to correct or amend the index minutes as they're presented? Uh, without any, I will approve them. And we have a, do we have a uh, request or report for liaison meetings? I think this would be you, Jeff. I was going to do that during the okay. right. Do we have any comments from council? Mr. Corbett. Mayor Jeff, I, I had a call from a constituent today that just asked this question, and I didn't know the answer, so I'm going to ask. Uh, she was concerned since the splash pad is so close to Power Dam Road about the safety of the kids. Is there any uh, fencing? Go ahead, Mayor. Yes, the uh, actually the Keller organization through its uh, <coughs> fundraising activity with a certain <coughs> tractor. I don't really quite know how it works, Mr. Corbett has raised the money to install a four foot aluminum, nice decorative fence starting over at the entrance off of the parking lot, starting at that entrance where the, the um, there's also a, a box for the library uh, towards the street and then it will run between the sidewalk and the splash pad. There's a narrow area. It'll run parallel to Power Dam Road and then cut back towards the, uh, the left field, or excuse me, the right field fence that's there for the ball field currently. And uh, quite honestly, I thought that'd be done by now, but it should be just about any time. Very good. Yep. Thank you. Mr. Mast. Uh, just a quick question regarding the CSX project at Atlantic. Has there been any communication from them on that as far as when well you know melinda sent that email out late last week but it's csx and csx and communication really aren't synonymous with one another so they'll send an email out here right directly i'm sure giving us very little notice and uh when it does you'll know and we will send out a nixel and mr helberg will put it on his website and in his newspaper. <coughs> Sorry, but that's 
dealing with CSA. Mr. Rusty. Uh, Jeff, with the weather changing, um, I had somebody ask me in regards to cats. Cats? Cats. In other words, cats wandering into the yard. Um, what is the protocol on how to um, alleviate cats well, coming into the yards that from neighbors or from the neighborhood? You can uh, file a complaint with my office. We'll follow up with it. Cats that are in other people's yards. I mean, we had a, a big um, discussion about cats uh, some time ago. And uh, if you have other cats doing their business in other people's yards, that's a problem. Uh, as a matter of fact, you can even go to the extent that you can leash cats. You can do a number of things. Anybody that feeds a cat, okay, whether you own that cat, whatever, you're taking, you, you control that cat when you start to feed that cat. So many people will just feed cats uh, at their own whim. And, and then what happens is these cats start coming around. If you have that issue and if she has that issue, she should contact my office and we'll follow up with it. I do believe Miss you rusty and I would fact check me on this, but that you can go to the animal shelter, get traps, trap those cats and then take them to the animal shelter. And then they don't euthanize them. They, I believe they spay or neuter if that's appropriate and then they're released again. That's the current protocol, but that's what I think. That's not what I know. Are we still contributing to the shelter for the animal shelter? or um, cats we we actually had a request that uh, is under consideration not necessarily for cats but for the humane shelter a couple of years ago we had i believe five thousand dollars of additional funds <clears throat> in the budget that was a one-time request and a one-time donation to help with their feline program we have not funded that since or nor been asked to do so well the, the problem with that is that it's our responsibility because in essence, we have an ordinance and our, our ordinance here in, Defi in Defiance basically says that we take care of the cat issue and there should be some place that that cat should go if it is picked up. And that's why I think we, uh, I think uh, it was a request that was made to contribute to the feline issue at the shelter because they weren't getting any. Uh, I think uh, probably, maybe six years ago, there was a request to council for some matching with the county, and that was rejected by city council. And then uh, I think within the last four years or three years, we did do the 5,000 5, contribution. I and I think it should be one of those things where it's continuing as long as that ordinance is on the books that you know we're alleviating uh, uh, cat issues in, in our community, they have to go someplace. Where would they go? That's just my thoughts. Yeah, no, you're asking the wrong guy if you're well, looking no, at me. We'll pull the ordinance, take a look at it, <clears throat> revisit it, and um, if you can forward me uh, the person, I'd be more than happy yeah. to get back with them. Mr. Engel. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> a couple of things. If, if that's reported to you or the mayor as far as all the cats, what, what will be done with that? I mean, what? What can we do with that? Because I know people just got beach cats and do that, and they're just all over. Just not in my neighborhood, but other places. But. Well, I don't. Um, I think our code addresses yeah. that you're not allowed to feed stray cats. I don't think our code addresses feral cats and what we're supposed to do with them. I, again, like the mayor, I don't know, but I don't think we have anything on the books other than you're not supposed to feed them. They're feral cats. So you you can't establish ownership, obviously. So I think you're correct, Mr. Leonard. Um, as I said, I I think the best thing we can do for all of you is we'll follow up with Mr. O'Donnell on what our code says. I'm happy to call Lisa Weiner and and check with her. But the the uh, dog warden uh, is uh, Mr. Vogel is exactly that a dog warden i don't believe he deals with cats and uh 
feral cats are just like, in some regards, raccoons and squirrels and rabbits. I, I know they're a pain. I do think recently we did charge someone for feeding a cat. Yeah. It went to court and, and, and that person was found guilty for that and uh, I assume fined, but I, I don't know that for certain. We can follow up with that and give you some information. And, and one other thing, I, if I'm not mistaken, Jackie Moss, Steve Moss's wife, I yeah. think she has taken cats in like she, that. She won't take them in anymore. People have been taking them out there. She won't take them. Won't she anymore? You no, know, one time she did a couple of years ago. Yeah, she was doing it. <coughs> I'm not so sure the shelter would really accept some. You'd have to check on that to be sure. But I, and I, the other problem is that when you spay or neuter, there's a good deal of cost involved, and there's no one to help with that. So it'd be nice if we could see some sort of public private get together to, to provide some sort of funding, get these cats at least paid, neutered, and then let go. I'd be happy to call Mrs. Weiner. I'll try to do that tomorrow. Thanks. Are there any other comments from council? I have only one thing on my desk, and that's a, a notice of liquor license transferred from Jimmy and Son, Inc., Doing business as Defiance Beverage Center, 1100 North Clinton of Defiance to 1100 North Clinton LLC. Doing business as Defiance Beverage Center at 1100 North Clinton in Defiance. Uh, does, it, uh, yeah. does anyone want a public hearing on the issue? Nope. Okay. Okay. And with that, we'll move on to the Board of Control. Mayor McCann. Thank you, President Master. I wanted to circle back with you guys on the uh, tree. That I believe you brought up Mr. Waxler last week between Meyer and Williams Street. And I mentioned that I thought that alley was not a public alley, and it is not. In fact, it was never even platted as an alley. How it became an alley, I don't know. But uh, that tree uh, is not our responsibility directly, but I will have Mr. Robeson deal with it from a nuisance standpoint. Okay. <clears throat> and beyond that, I just want to thank everybody that attended the Memorial Day service yesterday. There was a lot of people there, as many as I have seen at that event. Not a great surprise, but I wanted to also thank our cemetery workers, the parks department, the streets departments, the nuisance people that all had uh, Riverside Cemetery shining bright, and I really appreciate that. Our assistant, Debbie Stevens, who coordinates the whole thing, that starts in February when we start to reach out to all the different individuals that are involved, and Debbie pulls those meetings together, and we were able to pull that off. Mark, John, and Jamie from DCTV for seeing to it that it was broadcast on DCTV and the Defiance Band hammered out all their scheduled songs with the one exception of I forgot to have them play one. Commissioner Mack did a great job with his talk and Pastor Brobston and the other speakers. And, um, if you were there, you, heard, you had the great pleasure of hearing Sophia Castillo sing the national anthem a cappella, and she did an amazing job. And so just thanks for everybody. It's one of the things I look forward to every year. And that's all I have, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Leonard. Thank you, Mr. President. I've got a few things. Uh, number one, tomorrow there's going to be out at Pinehurst and, and State Route 281, there's going to be some test digs for a &R pipeline. They may have to um, shut uh, Pinehurst down. They didn't, they're not quite sure yet, but just to give you a heads up on that. They will be doing some work out there. The other thing that I would like to announce is I, I would like to have a traffic commission meeting on June 22nd at 5 o'clock. And the agenda items will uh, be, number one, a second access for 115 BD Avenue. 
no right turn on reds and restricted areas. I think I might have mentioned to council that we were having some issues concerning right turns in the downtown area. And I think what we want to do is uh, what I'd like to do at that point in time is just to bring it to traffic commission to have that discussion and uh, put it out there and make sure that it's properly advertised for the public and their participation. In it. And then the final issue will be uh, for the agenda will be handicap parking in the vicinity of 1005 Davidson Street. So those three agenda items will be on traffic commission and that time again is time and place will be June 22nd at five o'clock. The final thing that I would like to request from council is a quick executive session on, on matters of the collecting collective bargaining agreement for both police and fire. I think that there's some things that I would uh, certainly like to discuss with council. It could be changes, and before we do that, I would like to bring them to your attention, so it shouldn't take long. <clears throat> we have a request for an executive session. Do we have a motion for such? So moved. Motion. Second. Mr. Mast? Mr. Ingo? Yes. Mr. Corbett? Yes. Mr. Hancock? Yes. Mr. Rusty? Yes. Mr. Mast? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. And Mrs. Crutch? Yes. All right. An executive session before we adjourn for this evening. And is there anything else? Just one final matter. Mr. Uh, Waxler, we had talked about the signs. I've seen them. Yeah, yeah. they're up. And yeah. um, I've seen yeah. them today out there. Yeah. So thank you. That's all I have. Uh, Mr. O'Donnell is serving our country this evening. And so, Mr. Leonard. Because I'm not serving our country this evening. <laughs> You're serving the city currently, I suppose. I Serving our community. <laughs> Just a reminder that uh, next Tuesday we will have a finance and budget liaison meeting during regular session to discuss a quarterly financial update, um, a brief discussion on fees in general, and then a specific discussion on cemetery rates. Excellent. And uh, next Tuesday is June 8th, so right there at uh, 7 o'clock. Uh, with that, we have three items for discussion this evening. Mm -hmm. Caption of the first one is Elders. First reading by caption only. An ordinance awarding a professional service contract for the design of the Commerce Drive extension and declaring an emergency. Mayor McKinn. Um, thank you, President McMaster. I think this is something you've all expected to see here sometime. As you all know that uh, currently there's $750,000 in grant money that's been awarded to the City of Defiance for the improvement of East Commerce Drive. What we're requesting is the uh, to cover the engineering cost of $195,800 to improve East Commerce from Carpenter Road to and across the, the Napoleon Defiance and Western Railroad sometimes commonly known as the Pioneer or Short Line Railroad. Pioneer has indicated that they are willing to help with the actual at-grade crossing, and we still have to go to Common Pleas Court and get permission for that at-grade crossing. crossing. There'll be a couple options that we'll review. I think our uh, preference is that uh, the, curb, the street have curbs and gutters, but we will also look at open drainage leading to a drainage ditch along the side of the road also be a proposal for a sewage pump station and uh, I think it's probably worth noting that as you're heading west on East Commerce at Carpenter there would be a left turn lane and also as you are coming across US 24 heading south on Carpenter Road there would be a left turn lane there as well albeit a very small lane because of the coming across that bridge. Um, one of the real benefits to this that we don't often talk about is the completion of this road will give us much better access to the 44-acre 40, option property, what we refer to it as, that uh, the CIC currently holds an option with George Masterson that is on the uh, same side of the tracks as what we're talking about. That's what I have. Happy to answer any questions. 
Mr. Rusty. This is just the engineering costs for the project. That's correct. And the actual project cost is for the road. We don't know. We'll know after this engineering is done, they'll provide us with an engineer's estimate. Um, two and a half to three and a half million dollars. And that money will come from where? Various sources. Uh, $750,000 in grant. Right. There's another $125,000 pending because there's a project scheduled to be done in this corridor as well. And uh, Mr. Leonard, I'll let you answer the rest of the questions as far as where the money will. You're the money man. I hope that estimate is high. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say more like a million and a half, but I'm sure that's too low, too. Okay. Um, well, say a couple of million dollars. But yeah, there's uh, 750000 that has been committed in grants, um, primarily the result of the expansion that was done at Manville. That money is still available to us for when this project moves forward. Um, there could be additional money, as the mayor said, resulting from some additional new jobs, including what we've talked about recently across the street from Manville. Um, then uh, the water portion, the water line portion of the road, the sewer line portion of the road, those could be paid from the water and sewer funds. And then um, part of the discussion on what we do with um, the new federal funding that is coming our way. I mean, that's that'll be a part of the discussion we have with you folks. Um, but those numbers will all be firmed up as a result of this. Yeah. It's, an, work. it's interesting, and I guess I and I've, I've known this because I've been on council for a while, is that we do engineering costs first, get the, uh, in this case, it's a $195,800 that we um, put out to basically get these, the study. And then, then we come back and we're either going to approve or not approve the project. And if the project is whatever, you know, we turn it down, then we're out the 195, 80, 800. I mean, that's that's it's interesting how that's done. But I'd like to correct you. Just a little something you just said. Sooner or later, this road's going to have to be completed, and these engineering plans, whether the project is done in 22, 23, 24, the engineering plans themselves, for the most part, should still be good. There might be some tweaking, but a majority of the plan itself to build the road, where the road goes, how it crosses the, the short line railroad so that we have basically a perpendicular crossing. Those are, the railroad's not gonna move and and uh, nothing should happen that's gonna change these plans. But as far as where the railroad entrance, or that, that's part of the uh, project that's ongoing right now, uh, that's connecting from Dahmersville to that, uh, the railroad crossing, correct? The road went 600 feet in. There's probably at least that, if not more, yet to complete, but that's not our responsibility. Okay. When are they going to start that building out there? Anytime. I mean, there's, I see a lot of stuff happening, but nothing there. <laughs> there was, there was uh, some issues with the plan inspector, plan examiner out of Columbus, but those were cleared up last week. Mr. Rusty? Up to how long does a, is a 750000 available to the city? Well, technically now it's available to December 31 of 2021, um, which seems like a short time frame. Um, we've been granted multiple extensions. That's been uh, like a six month grant of, uh, you know, it's been available in six months increments. I think we're on our second or third extension at this point. Um, as long as we have um, things progressing in that area, um, ODOT has been seemingly amenable to extend the thing um, up until we'll need it. I got one last question. It's a moving, it's a moving deadline, and fortunately, they've kept moving it for us. If uh, if the the federal money that we're going to get in, if that wasn't available to us, and there was no other source um, to build the road mm -hmm. other than the property just being there, 
but we still had the $750,000 available. Um, if a business wanted to um, build in that area, would they be responsible for that piece of the road and potentially um, anything that they could uh, uh, take from the 750? There's money that's available for roads improvements in front of businesses. Um, I, I guess conceivably, Joe, we've we've debated for two years since this whole Harmon deal came along as to how much, you know, at what point should the city kick in the balance of this road project when we've got $750,000 in grants. And if all we had was the seven fifty dollars against the $2.5 million project and there were no no prospects of additional new growth out there, I, I don't think we would fund it until something more promising came along. And we would probably sacrifice the $750,000 in grants. And we're doing everything we can to extend that offer and to have it still available. We've got um, development happening out there. We have a promised new development happening out there. And then you've got to decide, well, how much more money can we get to fund it? And at what point, you know, say it's two and a half million dollars and we secure a million or a million two, then you've got to really decide, well, you know what, it's, it'd be probably be foolish to turn that kind of money away and not come up with a million dollar balance to finish it, whatever those numbers are. And, you know, if need be, a worst case scenario, if you need a million dollars for a road that's got to be done and you don't have another source of funding, um, you borrow a million dollars for five years. Uh, I mean... We and the council, we've got to decide whether doing that road and having the development that we've all hoped for along the 24 corridor for 15 years is worth funding when we're on the precipice of it happening. I, I think the other issue or the other point is, you know, you say you're right about the engineering, but you also have to add the planning component into that. We've been planning to look at Commerce Drive and Jerry Hayes, when he, Jerry was here, talked about Commerce Drive for a number of years. We brought the Harmon folks in to this council room to discuss the planning and the and the the development of that area. We've um, once once the construct once the engineering is done, then I think the numbers become a little bit more clear. But we're also waiting for opportunities where job creation creates grants and. Uh, I think we've done that with some of the programs that we already have. So 750 is in the bank already. Additional monies can come in into play as long as you have that job creation. And I think John said it best. When you have uh, the opportunity to you not maybe get all of it, you might get a portion of it. And not all of it is going to be on the, uh, when you think about it, the question really is, is how much should the, uh, the government participate in the government still has it's still a public purpose it can it can it, you have access for manville you can get trucks off carpenter road you can access uh manville better there are other attributes of the program that kind of fit it um how much of that i think that obviously we you know that's up for debate but i think we've secured quite a bit of money and i think that based on some of the development and discussions we had, certainly with the Harmon Group, uh, I think we're confident that that can be pushed forward and you'll see development there. Should we discuss the TIF, Mr. Leonard? Well, <laughs> there's not, I mean, part of that area is TIF. about the TIF. That yeah, part of that area, area is, TIF. is TIF. So, all these infrastructure costs, this engineering cost, and the cost to build the roadway, and all the other things, over a period of time, as that area develops, correct. Uh, the the TIF, the tax increment financing, can go back to pay this off. So we've we talked a lot over. We've we've focused on the two million dollars that went into the right. property purchase on the Harmon half of the whole Commerce Road <coughs> Commerce Drive area. The mayor is correct. That whole area, that whole corridor from Carpenter to Domersville is a part of the TIF area. And we would be able to reimburse ourselves for all of those costs that we have in it. <clears throat> the direct question to your answer is absolutely. If a company comes in and wants to build on the uh, deeper end, but this side of the tracks, 
Yeah, you could make a company build the road like you would make any private, like you could make any private developer. But at the same time, you're trying to incentivize a company to come and, you know, all the whole economic development world, um, you know, what are you going to give away? What are you going to charge? It becomes a part of the whole negotiation, I think. And I don't think you can answer the question today whether we would make a company pay for their portion of the road or not. Mr. Resting? So we have basically, what, uh, two buildings that are going in already on the extended road to Dahmersville, or one? Uh, Currently, there's one building scheduled for East Commerce between Carpenter and the railroad tracks, and one building scheduled, you see the building sitting there, that the Harmon Group is putting up at Dahmersville and East Commerce. Okay, and there's plenty of space for more buildings in that area. Oh, yes, sir. So it's not really a uh, priority for us at this point to say, if we don't build this, then if businesses want to come to defiance that they're out because there is no more uh, growth in that area. There is growth already in place with the uh, developer out of Toledo that's basically Harmon, that's basically uh, already developing the, the property and he could do add-ons to there. And for us to basically say we want to take two million or whatever the amount is that we could use elsewhere and build something I don't think that was ever, I think, like we said, that property has never been developed because in essence, we didn't, want, we didn't have the money to put in there. There were other priorities in our community. We do have this money, you know, in my opinion, I think we need to discuss where we could, we, where the best fit would be with that money. Mm -hmm. And we haven't had that discussion. If we go ahead and do this 195, 800, then we're semi-committed. And I don't see that's I don't see that being the the uh, what we should the purpose of what we should be doing right now. I think if nothing else, what we should do is uh, uh, table this, have our discussion on what are some of the projects that uh, could be utilized with the monies that we get from the federal government, and if this becomes the number one project that uh, in lieu of all the other ones, mm -hmm. yeah, we can come back to that point. But I don't see us at this point going forward with something without at least finding out what else is available if we're going to be using that money. My thoughts. This is Crutch. With the $750,000 grant, is there stipulations on what that money is used for? It is for the road. Mm -hmm. It is just for oh, the yeah. road. So just for the road. Just for the road. So the $195,000, that doesn't come out of the grant money? The it would engineer, not. It would not. It so would where not. does the one hundred ninety five? dollars come from? <laughs> well, it's going to come out of the capital improvements fund. Okay. Um, I mean, it would come from the income tax that fund the capital improvements fund that might eat into something we do in 2022 or would recommend to do in 2022. Uh, we have, as you are all well aware, um, uh, CARES Act funding, what was CARES Act funding and is now surplus in our general fund available. Um, you know, to the tune of over a million dollars. Um, we're slated to get close to another $3 million in federal funding. Um, and, you know, it's always a question, uh, you know, what is the what's the proper time to, for all of us to have these discussions? And Mr. Uresti, is, uh, his point is well taken, and, and maybe we should have that conversation much sooner than we expected. I can tell you that the, the the administration's recommendation is going to be that Commerce Drive is the number one priority because of the grant funding that is attached that is at risk of being lost. Because um, if you consider all of this federal money that's falling out of the sky, if, if, if you consider how can we best maximize <coughs> the return on that money, how can we best use that money so we get a long-term benefit from it, you have to look at economic development opportunities, which Commerce Drive represents. Um, you know, we could take $2 million and pave sidewalks and pave streets, but that's, those are operating obligations of the city that, that, once that once we spend that money, it's gone. It's not as though it's going to sustain street paving for the next 50 years. 
whereas an economic development investment with new jobs and that kind of growth could actually sustain operating expenses for decades or years to come. So I think we want to look from the perspective of what's the best way to maximize the long-term benefit that this windfall of money could provide, as opposed to just spending it on, and every, on, a, on a list of potholes that we should be trying to fund without that windfall anyway. You know what I mean? So it's a one-time windfall of funds, and we're trying to think of how we can best maximize it for the long term. Economic development seems to be, from the administration standpoint, possibly the best use of funds. But we can't finish that conversation, obviously, without the council. And, and Mr. Uresti is making a question, is raising a question about the timing that is, I think, probably very appropriate. And when do we have this discussion with you all? The truth is, we don't know exactly how much money we're going to get. We don't know exactly when we're going to get it. And we don't know exactly what those uses are going to be. Because even though some guidance came out, there's enough vagueness in the, in, in the, in the, and the, it's all open to interpretation. And it will be continually interpreted, modified for the next six months, maybe the next 12 months before a final answer is given on all the possible uses of the funding. The one thing that we did with the CARES Act funding, which gave us the absolute maximum flexibility, was when we discovered we could use that funding to pay for first responders regular wages, we did that. And so the CARES Act money is gone, but it freed up dollar for dollar that money in the general fund so we have that money basically at our disposal for whatever purposes this group wants to use it for we're no longer restricted by the cares act restrictions i don't know that we'll achieve that same level of flexibility with the new federal money that's a question that remains thank you mr waxler I understand what you're saying, John. I agree with some of it, but you know, like you said, we don't need to, once you put it down the street, it's gone. Well, you know, you got to maintain what you have to get people to come to your town and when drive when the streets full of holes and and bad roads. So I guess my point is is what you said don't make sense to me. Well, it's all about um so many things we talk about are the chicken and the egg. Is a company going to come because we have beautifully paved streets? Or are we going to get beautifully paved streets because we've added 500 jobs to our local economy? Which comes first? Well, there's people who we come here when they can't streets to drive on. You know, I, I don't know. I, I just, you know, we, we got some that are really bad that we've been, you know, Derbyshire is a good one. Derbyshire. See, no, no company that's contemplating coming to town could care less about Darby Well, we got to worry about we people do, that live here. But though. no company yeah. that's contemplating coming here is ever even going to know Darby Road exists. I know, but our taxpayers do. I know. And we don't. You and, know. and I don't mean to diminish that, but yeah, I know. it's hard to compare the two uses. Darby the residents of the Darby neighborhood, received a letter from me. I understand that. That you received a copy of. I understand that. That explained exactly what we're going to be doing over the next couple of years back in that subdivision. Now, if you want to bring up another street like Carpenter Road, fine. That's scheduled to be paved this year. If you want to bring up another street like West High, that's fine. That's scheduled for water line replacement and repaving next year. Mr. Waxer, I current I frequently take people on tours of our community. Outsiders coming to our community. I take them down for, for serious reasons. I take them down Carpenter Road. I take them down West High. I take them down some of our streets downtown. And while I'm doing that, I will apologize for the condition of some of our streets, but I intentionally take them down some of our poorest streets. I've taken them back in the Derbyshire area and apologized. And they say, oh, don't worry about it, sir. These are much better than the streets in our town. Now, I really don't care about the streets in other towns, but what I'm trying to do is solicit some feedback from these people. Just I, I totally understand that. I'm just okay. saying that there's a lot of roads that people pay for that we don't maintain. And I know Derbyshire has been a bad black eye for years for us. And we've still done nothing with it. So. Okay. 
we, we have done something. We've communicated to them exactly what we will be doing in 2022 and 2023. And in fairness, we tried the chip and seal. It, it didn't pan out. It didn't work out, but we did try it. We, we explained it. It's much. If we could go in and pave the streets. We can do that. We can probably do it this year. But we're going to dig them all right back up. Yeah, we've been doing that for 10 years. 10 years we've been telling that. We're going to do it. We still haven't done it. Did you have a question, Mr. Corbett? I just want some clarification. I see that this ordinance has an emergency clause attached to it. So is there a guy or a, we're under the gun with the deadline or what's well, the, the reason for the emergency clause? The last paragraph of the ordinance reads, uh, grant funding for the city is contingent upon timely commencement of this project. So and we, we've got to show ODOT that we're serious about this and by by doing the engineering work, that's our statement that he's saying we're serious about moving this along. Okay, but the grant money is available till December of this year, yeah? Correct. Okay. Right. Mr. Waxler? Where was that? You said there was another 125 or besides the 750 or something you didn't? There's another economic development project proposed that we have discussed here that we have petitioned ODOT, Jobs and Commerce, for some additional help with this road. And $125,000 was thrown out as a possibility. So the second building. And that would go on top of the 750? Correct. Yeah. Mr. Engel. There's no other questions. Most has been a call. Any other questions? We have a motion to suspend and call. <clears throat> Second. Second, Mr. Mast. Mr. Corbett. Yes. Mr. Hancock. Yes. Mr. Arresti. No. <clears throat> Mr. Mass. Yes. Mr. Waxler. No. Mrs. Crutch. No. And Mr. Engel. Yes. Okay. It has to come back as a second. Yep, it has to come back as a second reading because it's an emergency. It needs five council members, and we currently have one, two, three, four. So we'll bring it back for a second reading. First reading by caption only, an ordinance authorizing an entry into a grant agreement with the Great Lakes Absorbing System and declaring an emergency. Mr. Leonard. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, as a way to um, enhance uh, our, our water plant and in conjunction with our CSO program, one of the main um, items of discussion has been the the environment and water quality. And um, I have to give my compliments to Jennifer English, who has been able to, number one, uh, secure a program where we've gone out to um, the reservoir site and looked at filtering water out there and actually improve water quality uh, with uh, the farm land that we've actually uh, donated and um, we are actually monitoring uh, the uh, the issue of filtering out nutrients from that water and collecting data on that. Most recently, uh, and today, I'm happy to announce that uh, another program is we've got a closing done on the property that you see on 424 at Burning Tree, where we've acquired property and been able to actually um, secure a grant for a wetland. Most recently, dealing with water quality issues in the water plant, uh, we've been able to secure a grant for some $90,000 that will actually benefit the water plant in looking at real-time monitoring of sensor equipment where we can measure 
different attributes in the water like nitrates, um, phosphorus, ammonia, and some of those uh, kind of things that we're actually monitoring the water system and the draw that we take and put into the reservoir site so we can measure exactly uh, what is there and when we're putting it into our reservoir. And this has upside to us because in those days when we find that those uh, attributes that we're measuring are high, then obviously we wouldn't be we wouldn't be pumping into the reservoir site because of water quality issues. So I'm happy to announce and I've asked uh, Jennifer to come tonight to talk about the program. You have uh, the contract agreement between the Great Lakes Observing System uh, and the City of Defiance. I think that this fits well together with where we're going with technology, how we're going to use technology to to help ourselves and make better decisions on how we operate the plant, how we operate the reservoir. And what we have before you tonight is a, a, an agreement that we have with the Great Lakes Observing System, but it's a grant program that we've been able to secure and actually monitor water quality at the intake of our water plant. And with that, Jen, I'll hand it over to you. Sure. You can give some further details yeah, I, on that. I'd be happy to answer questions. Um, Jeff, you explained it very well. I mean, the, the really um, basic point of this is to have real-time monitoring. Um, right now, the water staff, um, Joe and Adam, Joe yours and Adam McDowell, um, they operate the, the plant by doing a manual measurement, and then they take that take the information from that measurement and they decide whether or not to pump river water into the reservoir. This will give us real-time data. It'll be a continuous. Adam's been, been um, saying this is something that they need um, for a very long time. So it'll give them continuous data. Um, if the river water changes, they can turn the pump off. They can, um, in, in a perfect world, this will give them the ability to keep the reservoir fuller. Um, they, they struggle to keep it full. Uh, right now, when they turn the pump on, they just pump until they get enough water, and they don't know what the quality is. So real-time data monitoring, again, like Jeff said, it really um, it complements the overall strategy that we're, that we're working towards. Um, we've been, I've been here before talking about source water protection. Right. So this is really, um, it also fits into our, um, our watershed plan, our integrated watershed plan. Um, $68,000 of it is for equipment. Um, there's $15,000 for consulting fees with a company called TetraTech that we currently work with. Um, Bruce Cleland analyzes our data on a regular basis, um, the staff that go out and collect samples. Yeah. So he's he's been looking at our data and collecting, um, giving us insights into our data. But the, the real crux of this, and I think one of the reasons that we were awarded the grant is because we showed how the data is going to help us make better decisions. It's not just collecting more data for the sake of it and putting it on a shelf, but it'll actually um, it'll give the water plant staff some really good information that they can use on a daily basis. So, And, and my compliments to um, Adam and Joe out at the water plant. They've done a lot of work, a lot of good hard work on source water protection and protecting uh, our source water. So um, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention them as well. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Any questions? Oh, this grant in the contract is for a year? Yes. This, now, does that set us up at that point with our own program that we can manage to and continue on yes. beyond that year? Yep, yep. So the, the $68,000 worth of equipment, it may take a little bit of um, very small amount of funding from the water plant to get the pump. They're going to pump, I think, about 30 feet up to the plant. So all of this equipment will be located inside the water treatment plant, and it will be ours at the end of the agreement. So um, the, the gloss... Um, I guess it's not an agency. Maybe it's an agency. I'm not sure. Nonprofit company. Um, they have a, a, a cloud platform that they're enhancing or they're redeveloping. It's called Seagull. So it's an online. Um, so the database is currently, the database they currently use is outdated. So they're actually going through a process of updating that. Um, so all of this data is going to feed into their new cloud-based system. And we think that will continue even after the year. But the year was just basically the the pilot project, just an opportunity to get it, get us up and running and make sure we work through all the bugs, get get the data collected, get it up to the cloud, um, and then they'll they'll leave us with the equipment and we can continue. So, which is the purpose of the emergency. We were 
hopeful that we would have been able to start this at the beginning of May. So we're asking as an emergency to be able to, uh, we're not asking for matching funding. This is just permission to enter into the contract um, so that we can go ahead and get started right away. Mr. Engel? Yeah, well this, you said it would, they could shut it off. Will this shut off, does it have to be shut off manually if the water changes or does that automatically, that senses that and they can shut off it's a good question for Adam and Joe. Um, I think they have to do that manually. They have staff there 24 okay. hours. So the data will be automated, but I think the main, I think the pump is a manual okay. switch. And, and along with that 90,000, how is that into our budget? I mean, I know that it's not within our budget Correct. currently, but will it be under MS4 or will it be under intake, waste? Right. How will that be facilitated? Um, and we'll be able to, we'll be able be, to monitor. It would be in correct, the water plant. It would be in the water fund. The, the operating like budget. Like a subcategory of the water? We'll have to appropriate the dollars, but then we'll get all the grant revenue to cover those expenses. There's just a few thousand dollars for uh, reimbursement of salaries. So there'll be a little bit of uh, my time that's covered just as kind of, I guess, the coordinator or project manager. It's not time for Adam and Joe. They were glad to glad to do the extra work because it's in the long run, it's data that will will save them time and money. But that's included in this 90, is that correct? Yeah. So there's about six thousand dollars of sure. um, of revenue that we'll bring in for for salaries. Yep. Mr. Engel? Yeah, no other discussion. They'll make a motion to spend a call. We have a no other question. We have a motion to suspend and call. Second, Mr. Corbett. Mr. Rusty. Yes. Mr. Mass. Yes. Mr. Waxler. Yes. Mrs. Crutch. Yes. Mr. Engel. Yes. Mr. Corbett. Yes. And Mr. Hancock. Yes. And we have a motion to adopt. Motion to adopt. Mr. Hancock, second. Second. Mr. Mass. Mr. Mass. Yes. Mr. Waxler. Yes. Mrs. Crutch. Yes. Mr. Engel? Yes. Mr. Corbett? Yes. Mr. Hancock? Yes. And Mr. Rusty? Yes. And Council President, may I say one thing? Thank you, Jen. This is very nice. Yeah, thank you very much. We'll we'll be back to give updates. We'll bring we'll bring Adam and Joe back. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And this ordinance is adopted. And lastly. First reading by caption only, an ordinance authorizing a city administrator to apply for a natural nature works grant from the Ohio Department of Nature Resources and declare an emergency. Mr. Leonard. Yes, thank you. Um, so as council is uh, well aware, um, we've made some um, incredibly nice improvements throughout our park system over the last number of years. Um, I think almost all of them have included new playground equipment and um, almost all of them have been uh, assisted with grant funding of one form or another and so our planner Nikki Warnicke who applies for all of these grants um, uh, we've been talking internally about uh, the playground equipment at Kingsbury Park possibly as a 2022 project um, <coughs> The new playground equipment at Bronson um, has just been installed, um, and I'm sure some of you have been out to see it. So um, Nikki is just doing her due diligence. Uh, there are deadlines for applying for these grants, and even though it would be a 2022 project, if it goes forward, um, she's requesting close to $50,000 towards the playground equipment, new playground equipment in Kingsbury Park. And um, if we get the grant funding, we would uh, be talking about this as a project for the 2022 budget. Excellent. Do we have any questions for Mr. Leonard? Mr. Resty? No questions. Motion to suspend and call. We have no questions. We have motion to suspend and call. Second. Second, Mr. Corbett. Mr. Waxler? Yes. Mrs. Crutch? Yes. Mr. Ingo? Yes. Mr. Corbett? Yes. Mr. Hancock? Yes. Mr. Rusty? Yes. And Mr. Mass? Yes. And a motion, motion to, adopt. to adopt. Mrs. Crutch, second. Mr. Waxler? Mrs. Crutch? Yes. Mr. Ingo? Yes. Mr. Corbett? Yes. Mr. Hancock? Yes. Mr. Rusty? Yes. Mr. Mass? Yes. And Mr. Waxler? Yes. All right. And this ordinance is adopted.
with that. Do you have a comment? Sure. Um, I just want to um, compliment the city for the look of the playgrounds in the parks. They look great. Take it a ride to any one of those. I mean, a number of years back, I never would have thought that look would, would improve. But it's like, I mean, it's, it's fantastic what, what's the makeover that's taken place in those. And you see a lot of the kids on those uh, uh, units or whatever enjoying themselves, and that's great. I just wanted to say that. Yeah, thank you. Um, before we exit to executive session, we don't have any guests this evening for citizens' concerns. Did any members of council have an email or a message? I did not. So we can stretch our legs for a couple minutes before we enter executive session. <laughs>